You're listening to the Casual Swinger Podcast. As your host, we need to warn you that the material you're about to hear may be sexual or explicit in nature. This podcast is intended for an adult audience. Now, we don't expect you to act like adults. What's the fun in that? We're a married couple living in Florida with over 13 years of experience in the lifestyle, and we take almost nothing seriously. Casual Swinger is a variety show, meaning we'll cover everything from music to events, travel, and even the occasional hilarious screw up. Our show is about entertainment. We're not licensed professionals. Not anything. And our stories, commentary, and guidance should not be confused with the opinions of a licensed professional. Now that you know, let's take those pants off and get comfy. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Casual Swinger Season 3, Episode 6. My name's Mickey. I'm one of your co-hosts. Yeah, and I'm Mallory. Oh, you are? I'm, I'm a co-host, too. Oh, okay. Well, you're prettier than me. Aw, shucks. I think everybody knows that, though. It was funny. I was talking to a couple uh, from Lauderdale that had reached out to us. We mentioned them a little later in the episode. But these guys, uh, one of the first things they said to me was like, wow, she's prettier than you. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> yeah, oh, I that's kind of mean. I think you're pretty. Oh, uh, no. Uh, he was actually being really complimentary. No, it was really sweet, actually. I was super flattered. Yeah, that was that yeah. was a really cool message to get. So we, we loved that. So uh, if you guys are listening, there's there's another shout out to you somewhere in this episode in the interview later. But yeah, we're not gushing. No, not I, us. I, I really, uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's nice. It's always good to get messages from listeners. We love hearing from you guys. But when you really explain like these guys did that something we did made a difference in your life. That is pretty much the biggest gift you can give a content creator in any space, whether it's YouTube or podcasting or writers or bloggers, uh, which I don't necessarily put them in the same category. But, you know, I really think that's like the biggest gift you can give somebody that creates something. Oh, absolutely. Because when we put stuff out into the ether, we, we never know. It could just go across the universe and never touch a soul. That's so. right. I mean, we could literally just release this thing and nobody ever hears it. Yeah. We knew that going into it, but it, yeah. you're right. It's um, it feels really good. It it makes my soul happy. When, yeah, well, when, when we get feedback you, like that, you yeah. grinned like a Cheshire cat. I did. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Anyway, but, all right. So, <laughs> what's going on around here lately, guys? Well, all kinds of things. So, first of all, first and foremost, do not forget that you still have time between now and about a month from now to do your enter your lifetime membership to Double Date Nation. Yeah. So that lifetime membership gets you entered into a giveaway basically for a free womanizer premium yes yes and i think they use casual 19 casual 2019 casual 2019 my bad i need to learn to read folks um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah when you sign up use that code uh casual 2019 and that'll yeah, automatically free get three you months for three free months and what do they have to do to get Nothing. the woman just buy a lifetime membership man that's easy so they just get a lifetime membership and everyone is eligible that's right that's awesome yeah it doesn't matter whose code you use you can use we got a things code you can use Safix code you can use anybody's code that you want if you use casual 2019 you do get three free months but you also do it if you get everybody else's yeah. and dave and andy are mm -hmm. friends of ours we don't take money from them or anything nope. so it's if you use our code great you get three months if no. you don't great you get three months from somebody else but you yeah. do get entered into a, a giveaway for the womanizer premium that is courtesy of us in casualtoys.com yes sir and they have to do this by september 30th correct yes because something changes big and so if you have to buy your lifetime membership by then and just to throw it out there even if dave and andy did not want to be our friends um that platform is amazing beautiful intuitive um check it out yeah. um take the three three free months and then if you love it, make sure you buy your lifetime before September 30th. Yeah. Somebody asked me the other day, they're like, well, why are you doing it if you're not doing it for money? And I was like, well, first of all, I love these people. They're amazing. But second of all, we want more people on Double Date. <laughs> I think that's, that's, that's really the, the thing. It's like we want as many people on there as we can find because if we're all in more of the same places, then we can find more friends. Yes, sir. Which I really like. So next weekend is a big weekend for us. What's next weekend? A virtual podcast. Yeah, oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, and we're doing it, shockingly enough, and the reason I brought up Double Date first is we are hosting a Double Date with Double Date oh Nation. Oh my gosh, so everyone's going to get to see how awkward I am in yes. dates? we're this doing a video awesome. date with Double Date Nation, and you get to see the date exclusively if you sign up for Virtual Podcast of Belooza. You can sign up for Virtual Podcast of Belooza at podcast dash a dash palooza.com. It's 25 bucks. There's going to be presentations from us, the bed hoppers, sex uninterrupted. Yeah. Uh, there's so many, so many great people that are going to be producing content there. I can't wait to see 
monogamish marriages content. Have you yeah. seen what they're doing? The how to host like an awesome house yes, party or how something. To host a yes. badass party. I'm like, I need help with that. I really do. So we well, we need to like invite people over. I think that's where it starts. We need like, friends. We can, yeah, we need friends that aren't a th- thousand miles away. Right. Yeah. Are, are you talking about Phoenix again? Maybe. Because <laughs> all of our friends are so fucking far away. Well, we have like a Midwest contingency too. Oh, we do. So Iowa. Yeah, Iowa, mm. Indiana, uh, Ohio, right. yeah, Illinois. Yeah, I got to tell you, our friends in Iowa are enough for us to travel to Iowa, though. I'll, I'll go back to Iowa for them. Yeah, but, I like cornfields. It's yeah, cool. It's yeah. the cornfields that you're into. Is that what it is? Sure. Okay, I believe and, you. And because that's how they get corn fed, right? Because that's what makes them so hot. God <laughs> that's damn the only right they thing are. I can think of. You know of. what? That's actually not my favorite thing about them. They may be the kindest, most genuine people. Yeah, that's true. Like, they really are just something. And I know anyway. we're, we're, we're kind of talking about something you guys have no idea what we're talking about. But we have like two or three groups of friends up there in Iowa. And they're all just amazing. Yeah, I, I was uh, like... I don't know, 32 years old for the first time I met somebody from Iowa. Wow. So I was like, oh, that's still here? <laughs> I, it's still around? I thought it fell off. Well, like, I'm not, where I'm did not, it go? It's in the middle. It can't fall in, in the ocean. In all fa- fairness, I'm a little naive. I'm not well-traveled. I can't, can't even say I'm really cultured. So, so what are you? I'm learning. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm learning as we go. She's a pervert. That's what I she am. is, folks. So if you get a chance, make sure to join us for Virtual Podcast Lose. I do think it's going to be a lot of fun, and it's going to be something a little different than what you can get normally here on Casual Swinger. Now, also, don't forget, coming up, we have November and February with Rachel's Rascals oh at gosh. Hedonism 2. I'm so excited. I cannot wait for November. It's going to be amazing. Oh, it's, it's off the hook. It's And we've we've still got, you know, 80 couples coming with us, so it's still going to be a great awesome. time. Awesome. Yeah, and by the way, uh, just keeping up to date with information that's available. So go to visit Jamaica dot com to stay up to date because they used to have what four or five states that were required to have the testing done before entry into the country right four four mm-hmm. so now it's every u.s yes uh state you have to have a negative covid test done uh, by an ten, approved lab by an approved lab 10 days before you arrive you still have to fill out all the forms that we discussed previously so just throwing that out there anyone planning a trip here soon also, if you're traveling, remember you have to stay on premise. So wherever your des- destination is, that's the only place you can be. Yeah, which that's means you can't else. do what a lot of people do, which is go stay at a different resort the day you get there. Because, you know, a lot of times you travel all day. It's a lost day. Who wants to spend $500 on a lost day just to be at Hedo to say you were when you can go down, you know, to Ivan's or something for $99 Yeah, Negril, a Yeah, Negril has a lot of, like, really nice, like, vanilla resorts there, and a lot of people do that. But the way um, it's outlined right now... Once you leave the airport, you are going to one destination and you are to stay there until you are ready to leave. Yeah. So you just kind of have to go where you're going. And that either means shortening your trip or just paying the money to be there an extra day. I know the resort's not sad about that. No, and I'm not sad if you come a date early. (laughs) Come often. Mm -hmm, Yes. But these parties that we're throwing down here in November and February, we still have a couple of rooms left. If you really want to get the hell away. Reach out to us. Go to casualswinger.com slash travel with us and check out what we've got on rachelsrascals.com. That's the other thing you can do. You can just go directly to rachelsrascals.com. That's R-A-C-H-A-L-S rascals.com and see what the rates are and the different room types and stuff like that. But the really the gist of it is we're throwing a badass party. We are also there the same time as some other good friends of ours, which is iOS connections and the dirty pervs for dirty perv week. Yeah, man. Now those guys throw a fantastic party by themselves. You put the two of us together and it's going to be like two hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico at the same time. Oh, is that supposed to be punny? Punny? Yeah. I don't know. It might not even be funny, but they don't look like they're going to be that bad as far as hurricanes go. So just, you know, kind of category ones, blow some shit around. Throw I some love rain. I love how you just said that because it's like this project's only going to take me an hour. Oh, wait a minute. See, that's not funny because they're only supposed to take me an hour. It's not my fault that things take longer. Mm-hmm. Don't jinx it. <laughs> well, like, our fingers are crossed for everybody. I will say this, and I'm serious as a heart attack when I say this, that What's going on in the world out there today in California with the fires, two hurricanes rolling up? I will tell you, there's a lot of people in this world that are good people that are wishing the wind would blow in a different direction and ruin somebody else's life and not theirs. It's not because they're bad people. It's just the way we're all wired. You know, when a hurricane's coming this way, we go, God, I wish it would go the other way because, well, it would go out into the Atlantic and that would be great. It wouldn't bother anybody. But once they get into the Gulf of Mexico, no matter what it does, it's going to screw somebody's life up. So our fingers are crossed for everybody. Amen. But so let's talk about kind of what we've been doing here. 
Uh, how about planning for our fornicatorium? Oh my gosh. So it's bittersweet, right? So we have a room opening up somewhere in the next, you know, couple of months or so. Um, we have a birdie leaving the nest, which opens up space that's really ideal for a fornicatorium. Yeah. So we're basically going to build what amounts to a dungeon, but I don't know that I would call it a dungeon because uh, I mean, we're into some bondage, some impact play. Maybe, but not really like BDSM. So I'm really trying to envision what this is going to look like because, and hopefully we're not the only people that end up playing in there. Hell no. So I want to actually ask our listeners, if you had to build your sex room, what would it include? Yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, it's a great question. What yeah. What would you put in your own fornicatorium? What goes there? I mean, yeah. because I think that the obvious answers are... You know, things like Liberator Bedroom Adventure Gear. Yeah, we which, have the S. We have which the would S. Be per- it's going to be perfect in there. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, we have your motor bunny. Yeah. Uh, what other things? I mean, I obviously want, some things for bondage. Yeah, I want a spanking bench for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I had, like, a couple experiences with them, and I'm so in love. So I think you want, like, a legit horse, though. Because we so? have the Liberator spanking bench, and it's a little more... I don't know. I guess the best way to put it is it's 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 squishy and it's really not something yeah, that the, supports you the way that a genuine horse spanking. Yeah, because this one, like literally, when you look at it, it looks kind of like a sawhorse with padding until you get a little closer and it's got like the knee holds and everything. You can widen them and shorten them depending on you know how long your legs are and yeah. that's definitely something I want. We talked about St Andrew's Cross. Mm-hmm. I'm conflicted on that one. Well, it makes it obvious when you walk into that room what that room is for. Yeah, I know. It's like someone's fucking in here. I know. <laughs> I think I it's going to be pretty cool. But, you know, I just want to get a kind of idea because like, if I had to, like, really dig into my imagination, I envision, like, a Bond-like room where everything looks really, like, normal, and then you hit a button and everything flips out from the walls <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> well, here's what we're going to do. So we're going to obviously put some things into this room, and we're going to look for your feedback, listeners. So reach out to us and let us know what you think goes in the Casual Swinger Fornicatorium. And once we get it all together, we will do an episode and guide you guys through yes, the Fornicatorium. I'll, I will give you a tour. Yeah, so you'll get and a demonstration. audio tour. Oh, yeah, demonstrations. Oh, yeah. no, we could do video. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we'll just have to look like we're on Unsolved Mysteries. Oh, that'd be funny. As yeah. Well. We'll, we'll put it on YouTube or something. We'll, we'll figure it out. But I think it's going to be a lot of fun. But before too much time goes by, because we do have to get to what we're doing here today. The whole yes. reason we're here is to talk shit. Talk about smut. Not actual shit. We're going to talk about smut. We're going to talk about talking dirty. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're going to talk about our special guest today. So let's talk about talking dirty, just you and I for a second. <laughs> okay. What do so, you want to know? It, now, Are you interviewing me? I want to know. I mean, you've always been a really good shit talker in bed. I love that you say that. You make it easy, though, and we've been together so long. I know where your hot buttons are. And I think the challenge with talking dirty is being with a new partner and how deep in their mind you are when you go into the physical action of sex. I think that's part of it. Hmm. Well, I know that other people obviously don't do it for me the way you do it. So I think there sure. is definitely a aspect to talking shit in bed that, you know, you're better at because you know me the way you do and you know what my hot buttons are, but you were good at it to begin with. Yeah. So there's something intuitive about you where you kind of see maybe that I'm watching something in particular. So oh, you key in on it and watch it and talk about it. It's totally my AD. It's my ADD. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah. really, really, really hot and then i mean you you know i'm visual so you're like you know what do you want to see yeah so you talk about it yeah and you talk about what it is i'm looking at i think all of those things are really hot for me but i don't know where the hell you get it from it's just something you seem to be naturally good at oh maybe i'm just a little bit of a minx i don't know i don't know i i love being able to do that i love a good mind fuck but i don't feel like i can open that opportunity up for somebody unless i give it to them first you know, it's yeah. it's like, cons- I guess, consenting to it. Do maybe? you like being talked dirty too? And is it the same I... type of talking dirty that you give? Okay, so I do. I do. But I embarrass and blush really easily. And when I feel that way, especially when I'm super flattered, I start giggling. Uh-huh. So I, I fucked up dirty talk before by giving off like the impression that I found it hilarious and not sexy by giggling. So I, I have to kind of control that. 
Okay. Well, I, I yeah. guess, and maybe that's a challenge for a lot of people. Now, th- another challenge for a lot of people is not knowing what to say or what types of things people might find find attractive or interesting. And so what we did for you guys is we went out and found an erotic author. Literally a silver tongue devil. Oh, yes. She's, see what I did there? I do. I see what you did there. We have for you guys coming up in just a couple of minutes the beautiful, the erotic, and the very fucking twisted. Talented, Lexi gorgeous. Can I keep going? A lot of going? words. Can we just, well, she likes adjectives more than we do, so. I, I, I need to open up my vocabulary a little more. Oh, she and I had fun. You did. I was like, are they going to fuck? Because <laughs> I'm cool with that. Well, no, I, you, no I she was sense, great. She's pansexual, but I also get the sense that she's sapiosexual a little bit, too, because uh, when we were talking, there was just certain aspects of the conversation where I saw her light up on video. Like, yeah. It was, it was, I think that uh, having people that can really engage in discourse the way we were able to before and after the interview uh, was, was exciting for both of us. So I actually really enjoyed personally that interview on a lot of levels. Oh, I did as well. I mean, she's, she's a lot of different things. So strong women like that automatically, like I have an immense amount of respect for, um, but the way how personable she is, how tangible she is, but also how intelligent she is. I mean, we've interacted with her previously and that opportunity to have that discussion with her, like I didn't want it to stop. Yeah. And do we do a spoiler alert? Because we ended up talking to her longer than our episode. We did. Yeah. We ended up, this is going to be a little long. We're going to, so this whole episode is probably about an hour and 20 minutes long guys. And and I know we've had a lot of long episodes this season, but I got to tell you, this one's worth it. We talk about her job at SDC. We talk about her book, Mating Season, mm-hmm. Volume 1, which is a collection of erotic short stories. And we even dig in to the motivations of some of the characters in some of those stories. Yes. Before we get into what is really what we want you to hear in this episode, which is talking shit in the bedroom from yes. an expert at yes. writing smut. So if you've ever wanted to know how to talk better shit to your partner, it doesn't matter whether that partner's somebody you're just fucking or somebody that you're in love with. This is an opportunity to hear from somebody who literally dreams up perverted shit for a living. Yeah, there's some great advice stuffed in there. Yeah. So we thought this was a great episode for you guys. It was so much fun to record. And I know I'm gushing over Lexi here, but it it was really really a good one for me. Somebody has a crush. A lot. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. It's not a bad thing. But anyway, baby, why don't you let everybody know how to find us and we will get to the good shit, guys. All right, guys, we're Casual Swinger everywhere. Casualswinger.com is our website. You can reach out to us there or podcast at casualswinger.com. Feel free to shoot us a note. We're on social media as Casual Swinger. That's Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. You can also find us on the dating sites, Double Date Nation, SDC, SLS, and Quiver and Cassidy. Wow, look at you. Yeah. You never fail. All right, folks, without further ado, we bring you the erotic, the sensual, the brilliant Lexi Silver talking shit here on Casual Swinger. Welcome back, everyone, and the moment you've all been waiting for. Oh, is that it? It's yeah. another interview with Casual Swinger. Guys, this has been so, so long in the making, right? We are avid users of lifestyle dating sites like SDC, which stands for Seek, Discover, Connect. How about that? I had to think about you it for got a second. That. It used to be Swinger's Date Club, so it kind of you know changed. But anyway, they've got this incredibly attractive little minx, an author of Smut, a director of marketing. You know, this girl does it all. Now, it's been said that the mind is the greatest erogenous zone. To get inside your partner's head is to get in their bed. Authors know how to get in their reader's head, and one such pro is that girl we're talking about today, the sexy author of a new book of erotic short stories. It's called Mating Season, and her name is Lexi Silver. Lexi, how are you today, darling? Oh, I am so good, especially after that intro. I feel way more competent coming in here. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I'm, I'm here to pump you up. Yes. Uh-huh. That's what we do. Uh-huh. Puns intended. 
right? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm the one that gets pumped up, but not literally. I mean, I suppose you can pump water if you want to, but <laughs> let's talk about you. How you been? What you been up to? I have been great. I have been writing a ton of smut, new stuff, which I should probably, um, you know, not be talking about because it is only going to be coming out next year. But uh, I'm already working on more things. Even though I just published mating season, I can't seem to stop myself. So... <laughs> That's that's so awesome. So you're a lot of things. I mean, you're this amazing author. I mean, you're you're so busy. Your calendar's slammed. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and all the things you do in addition to be an, a writer and an author? Oh my! Uh, how much time do we have? Uh... <laughs> as much as you want. <laughs> I do quite a few things. I think the thing that. Um that I spend the most time doing is that I'm the media director for SDC. Like you said, Seek, Discover, Connect. Uh, We have this whole media site devoted to sex education, learning about open relationships, different kinds of relationships, how to get into them and all of that. So I get to work with educators all around the world in five different languages and you know, get to listen to their podcasts like yourselves, uh, get to look at their videos, read their articles and pop them onto SDC. And this way, it's such a great connection because I get to also work with the members and see what our members are interested in learning more about. And then I get, you know, so I'm this really lucky intermediary where I get to learn and help educate simultaneously just by virtue of working with SDC. So that's one of the things. Let's start with that. (laughs) Yeah, that's one thing. Now, SDC is huge. It has an ass load of members, but it sounds to me like their mission has kind of morphed a little bit where it was a place for lifestylers or or people in kink to to get together and just connect. And it now it's kind of morphed into a community and uh, maybe a little more of a social media entity where people go to get educated as well as get connected. Absolutely. And, you know, I think we must have launched the media site. Uh, and by media, I mean the educational part because there's the dating site, which is what you're used to. You're super active on it. You know, you, you can connect with the members directly. You could build your own communities and groups, find out what parties are going on, that kind of thing. Um, so there's the dating site and then there's the media site. And since we launched the media site a couple of years back uh, to, you know, help educate our members. So that was always the goal, right? We wanted to be able to educate our members. So the word swinger has really kind of, um, it it evokes a lot of things from people that are not always positive, right? People have like a lot of negative stigma. Um, Sorry, the word swinger has a lot of negative stigma. A lot of people seem to think it's all about, you know, uh, those old school 1970s key parties where you're swapping your partner and that's what it is. But it's a whole world beyond that. And what we've noticed too is that folks who are younger, who are entering some kind of open relationship, anything aside from monogamy, maybe they are doing what we consider swinging, but they don't want to be called swingers. They are open-minded or they're, uh, or they're kind of, uh, they're poly swingers or any other term that you can come up with. So with the media say we're able to help educate people about all these different terms, what they mean and how in the end, the label is not as important as what it is that you're doing because two swingers could have completely different lifestyles and could have different rules and different relationships. So a lot of our time uh, went into educating people with the media site. So that is a huge change that we've had over the last couple of years. And our actual dating site has evolved so much. I mean, we keep adding new features. I can't even tell you how many hours uh, we've spent over the last six months really just redeveloping our dating site to make it even easier for people to connect with each other. So yes, it is sort of that kind of social media platform in the sense of you will be able to connect with all of our members all around the world and in a private way that you, and you won't get kicked off, right? If you put up a saucy pic of yourself, you're not going to get banned. So it's much better (laughs) in my opinion than other social media out there in that sense. And you can still connect with people, which is where the C comes from in SDC. Now, before we jump to the, because I I do want to talk about some of those new features here in a second, but, uh, you know, I'm going to steal a page out of Mallory's book. She says that that post-millennials 
kind of askew labeling. Right. They really don't like it, period, especially being called millennial. <laughs> but uh, they, they tend to not like labels. And are you seeing that as well? And where are most of your users centered? Because I think most of the most of these communities really have a strong center in different parts of the country. Where is SDC? I mean, most of our base is either is, – is American. So definitely massive base in the U.S. But – you know, everything first kind of started for SEC in Europe, in the Netherlands. So that we have a huge membership in the Netherlands. So those are kind of our two hotspots is Europe and the States. And Canada is just, you know, getting started. We're just kind of growing with that. Um, as far as labels and people wanting to be more flexible with what they're calling themselves, I think that, yeah, that is definitely a thing. And especially for people who are younger and younger, there's there are two kinds of streams of thought with this. There's the There are people who want to be labeled and they have 30 different labels for themselves. They're sapiosexual, open-minded, polyamorous, uh, you know, they, they, they're, they you know, um, oh, what I'm trying to think of some of these other terms that are thrown around. They want multiple labels for, to identify who they are. That's how they want to describe themselves using these labels. And then there are folks like myself who hate labels. I hate them because like I had mentioned before, even if I tell someone I'm a swinger, but I'm kind of more polyamorous, I have to explain myself. What does that even mean? What does it, what did it, does it mean for me to be a swinger versus what does it mean for someone else to be a swinger? So labels are helpful, but I personally don't love them. And there are definitely a lot of folks like myself also who are <laughs> in that bracket of, let's say, millennials or, you know, um, I, 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 which is very broad and people have disagreements about what that even means in terms of ages and years and all that. But yeah, definitely huge amount of people who are not loving the label thing. And that's why STC has opened up a lot of different things related to identifying as a swinger, giving people the option of also saying that they're curious or they're open minded so that we don't all have to fit in that one category. I love that. And I have to agree with you. And I use this analogy from time to time. Like when we use labels, it's like I'm telling you to go north, east, south or west, but I'm not giving you a specific address because that is, again, specific to me and my person. So I co I'm completely with you and understand. So I think that's a great way to put it. And the two trains of thought. Yeah. It totally makes sense to me. So getting back to the site, SDC. So there are a lot of new features on there. And one of them that I noticed was this uh, video feature, right? And is this intended to let couples like explore like their best adventurous or like exhibitionist uh, side like what's that intention there? there's a lot of dudes jacking off on there yeah a few i mean straight up cock fest well, every time i, mean, I click on that link. and look i mean uh some 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 cocks are nicer than others so i don't mind watching from time to time uh yeah, but no but it's yeah. party time in the hot dog aisle i mean it's like hey it gives me a lot of options well, i'm just saying you so yes the live stream option which is what you're talking about in terms of the video so live stream is it's it's not new in the sense that we used to have this feature back in the day. Then, um, yeah, oh, we did. We called okay. it, um, I believe, voyeur cams. Now we're doing a lot of different things related to the live stream. Um, and we're making it possible for people to connect over chat. And eventually, you're going to be able to... Um, to do a live stream. And then the video will become a part of your profile. So it'll help... Uh, it, it will automatically be connected to your personal profile on SDC so people can see the live streams and watch them over and over again if they want to. That's interesting. Is it tagged like right to your profile, like say like in a same ca similar categories like yeah. pictures or, or that kind of digital content? Yeah. And it'll be really cool because people can then get to know you a little bit better. So some people might decide to, let's say, do an introductory video, but maybe they want to they don't want to use like video software you know, any other video software, we're giving people that option where they could just use our live stream platform to do that. They could record a video just talking about themselves, saying who they are. It doesn't have to necessarily be anything sexual um, or, you know, if they want to get a little naked or do something like that, that's cool too. Just to get give people an idea of who they are and like what kind of vibe they have, you know, and then, yeah. 
It's genius, a video intro. Yeah. yeah. I love that. So we need to do that, but we need to do like the unsolved mysteries where it blacks us out. So we're all. <laughs> <laughs> like we're in witness protection? We kind of are. It'll be awesome. <laughs> you could totally do that. You could, or you could wear masks. Oh, sweet. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm going to bust out my old uh, like she or Wonder Woman, like the plastic one from the 80s <gasps> that are totally frightening. Yes. Yeah, that'll 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 get me late. That's Here so hot. Here's an empowerment episode, I'm, folks, from Casual Swinger. <laughs> I'm so down with that. I, I love that. I think it's super hot. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So enough about SDC because I think everybody, I, mean, I think most of our listeners, I mean, we, we get a lot of traction from SDC. We're there a lot. We get a lot of messages. By the way, both of you that have messaged us from SDC to say you love the show, we love you back, and you know who you are. As a matter of fact, we just got one the other day that just blew our socks off. Yes. So that couple uh, who's from Lauderdale, absolutely amazing. Uh, it was one of the best messages we've ever gotten on SDC, so thank you so much. Now, let's move on. Let's talk about mating season. Uh-oh. This is your <laughs> second book. So was All the Queen's Men an erotic fuck fest as well, or is this new territory for you? So All the Queen's Men is just a single erotic story whereas this is a book of erotic stories so it was kind of a standalone tale and it was erotic uh, a bit more i guess game of thronesy but before the whole game of thronesy thing happened where everybody was freaking out about it so um that was different because i wrote that a while ago And Mating Season is a collection of stories that I wrote over a period of time, including some that were as recent as last year. So in Mating Season, you can actually see a progression of, I want to say, my sexual and and psychological development or my psychosexual development, if you will. Um, But with All the Queen's Men, there wasn't really that whole progression. It was a story that was not... Uh, sorry, it was a fictional story. And in mating season, a lot of those are based on my real life experiences, except for, you know, <laughs> one that is very notable, succubus, which is supernatural. And there's just no way that could have ever happened because, you know. <laughs> oh, I was totally going to ask if that was you. <laughs> but uh, other than that, I mean, most of those are based on my real life experiences. So um, I don't I don't know if that helps answer your question, clarify a bit. It definitely does. But I, I, I'm going to kind of go off here and just ask you like what's the obsession that we seem to have with medieval sex uh like you said all the queen's men is sort of game of thronesy and of course game of thrones was just sex 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 everywhere i mean first of all there were no fucking toothbrushes back then and second of all a lot of bush (laughs) so what's sexy about that who wants to go to a renaissance fair and get like you know pubes stuck in your that is a really good question and those are obviously things that i thought about too because that's always been a mystery to me all these people who bathe like once every couple of weeks, you know, uh, not not the best smelling or most hygienic folks, you know, you're talking about I, it, it was a different time. But the whole idea is, I think, the the settings, um, you know, thinking of castle kind of setups, people having this whole uh, dichotomy where you have royals or some kind of royalty or nobles, and then you have everyone else. And then obviously, you know, talking medieval times, if you want to go into like stereotypes and everything, you have slaves, right? Which it's, it's a little bit different. So because of all of this, I guess, power struggling that happens in a lot of these style, you know, medieval style, Game of thrones style um, stories, maybe with the exception of all the Queen's men, because the focus is more on the sex and less on the power struggle. <laughs> Um, (laughs) it's, there is something sexy about that power is sexy. So I think that's maybe one of the reasons why people find that hot. I find that hot. Yeah, I have to agree with you, but I will admit that in my fantasies, everyone yeah. is very well groomed and showered and, <laughs> and bathed. Good. Yeah, I am not time period appropriate when I have my fantasies yeah. regarding that. No amount of good smelling oil is going to kill swamp ass. You need soap. No, in my head, there's plumbing yeah. and hot water, Baking. and we yeah. we ba- we even trim each yeah. other if we have to. But there's oh. like no like it's not gnarly yeah. like it was back then. Grooming fantasies from Mallory. <laughs> yeah. So I love I love that you you just said like you're pulling from real life experiences. So that's kind of yeah. vulnerable, like from a writer's perspective. So what made you decide to take that leap instead of uh, pulling it from complete fiction? Oh, wow. Um, that's a really good question. And yes, it is definitely 
clear when you're reading mating season that some of the stories do show show me or my character, whatever name the character has, mm-hmm. as more vulnerable, as having idiosyncrasies, having made mistakes. All of these things are human. Mm-hmm. So what I think is important in any kind of literature, even erotic literature, because it's not all about the sex. There's a story in there. There's characters in there. They have to, you know, you have to relate to a character. Otherwise, if you can't relate to a character or if you don't like the character, why do you care if they're having sex or not? So Even having faulty characters, sorry, by characters, I mean myself in that role, let's say, because, you know, I have a variety of different stories, different characters who take on, you know, different parts of me, Mm -hmm. let's say, so I guess extensions of myself, and they all handle different things in different ways. And in Obscure, which I'm sure you're going to reference at some point, um, that is the it's a love story and there's a lot of lust in there and there's there are a lot of problems. This character was trying to grow and figure out who she was and I was very much trying to grow and figure out who I was as I was becoming more sexual and, and you know go growing into adulthood. And I made a lot of mistakes and some things were, you know, I I wanted to to change. I just still think about certain things like that that oh my god, well, you know, um had I known that, had I known then what I know now, which we all think, right, I would have done things differently. And thinking about all of that, that's when Obscure kind of uh, took a different turn. Now, that story is not fully 100% based on real life. A lot of it is. I had to add in a little bit of, you know, uh, some some fun narration and some stuff going on in there. But it was essentially very, very real. And the feelings were very real. And the struggle with being polyamorous was very real at a time when that wasn't in fashion. Mm. So having the ability to be a writer and to actually get that out on the page, even though it was, it definitely felt very vulnerable. And I thought a lot about, oh God, should I publish? This is almost like a diary entry to a degree. <laughs> um, and it, it, it's fucked up, but it's true. Um, I decided to do it. I, I went with it because it was very different than any of the other stories in mating season. And I needed to have something that did connect with love uh, to a degree because Sex is sex and intimacy are not the same, but there was an interesting way to, I guess, make them meet in that story. Um, I don't know if that answers your question at all. If I went on a whole other fucking tangent there, <laughs> but yeah, I was okay with being vulnerable because I feel like a lot of people really identified with that kind of a struggle. We're in season three, Lexi, so people are used to like really <laughs> random shit happening on this show, so it's totally fine. Uh, you know, it's it's funny that you call out obscure because to me, and I did read your book, uh, it, that was the story that jumped out at me. That's the one that, that captured me and made me go back. I read that story twice as a matter of fact, Oh boy! because, and, and I read, I read them all, but that one really jumped out at me. So from the first story in the book, which is a, a story called trick shot mm-hmm. and trick shot is very physical, physical attraction, competitiveness. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really carnal. And then to Obscure, which is the one that really leapt out at me, you really attack a lot of different angles of sexual psychology. Now, Trick Shot, again, was just kind of so physical, but Obscure pulled at the strings Mm -hmm. between love and lust. And, And the whole idea of reconnecting with something you lost, the thrill of the taboo, and then the pain that comes up when you do realize, and and she says as an adult, when she was young, she didn't know it, of course, there was no term, but as an adult, she actually said, I'm polyamorous and you're not. That's Mm -hmm. a quote from the book. So that's some pain that a a young person can, can really go through and can really feel. You really walk the path with this book. You even go supernatural and and get fucked by the devil and succubus, which is just nuts. So are you a (laughs) schizophrenic? I mean, like, like, (laughs) is your mind really this variable? It really is. Uh, My my brain is all over the place at, at, at any given time. I just... I've been inspired by so many things. I've had a lot of different experiences. And I mean, mating season is just a very small collection of stories. I have hundreds more. Uh, spoiler alert, there are going to be multiple mating seasons, volumes, however many. Just just, just for your 
for your knowledge for later, oh, uh, for later. Awesome. Um, but yeah, I have some, I have a lot of different stories, but um, I, it's not just the ideas. It's also the tone of the stories and what happens to them. Right. Um, in obscure, like I said, that was really a very, um, there was a lot of nostalgia. There was a lot of emotion. There was a lot going on and the sex, the sexual connection that she had with Damien was really a, a lot of it was based on this um this love that she felt for him that was never and, and and this lack of closure right um in other stories that i wrote like you mentioned trick shot i actually i had a chance to you know play a little bit more there you have a very different narration style because i'm looking at it from two people's perspectives they each get a turn to talk about what they're seeing and feeling and, and experiencing so all of my stories that I've written since I was able to start writing erotica, whether they're in mating season or not, I have a lot of variability in terms of the way I describe the characters, who the characters are, the crazy scenarios they find themselves in or, you know, put themselves into and the way, you know, the, the tone of the narration. Um, it's, I try to to experiment with different things. I think I just get bored if I tried one just one thing. Probably why I'm Polly, right? Because I, I get bored with just <laughs> with just right? one thing. <laughs> well, and it's it. I tell you, I'm I'm gonna kind of stick to obscure for a second because Jade's journey was really interesting to me because it was rooted in in emotion for her. Yeah. And you know, she talked a lot about not wanting to be tied down in in the you know the past tense version. Yeah. The previous to the ten year reconnection. But, you know, it wasn't just tumultuous for her. It was a tumultuous for Nick and Damien as well. Yes. But what we didn't cover, so her connection with Damien was really well documented and there was a lot of sex and there was a lot of lust. But then whenever she spoke of Nick, it was very much rooted in love and security yes. because he showed her that. But she never talked about the sex with him either. So <laughs> can you tell us a little bit of, about Jade? Is is this a cautionary tale for the challenges of polyamory? And what happens if it went the other way what if nick wasn't the guy that he was at the end of that story those are things that you know i i kind of i i thought of these things as i was writing the as i was writing the stories i was going over it however many times um <laughs> before i i put it into the book one of the reasons why she doesn't talk a lot about the sex with Nick is because I wanted to focus more on the emotional part of it rather than the sexual part of it i think it's pretty much um from what you know the I guess the initial parts of that story are it's clear that Nick is is great sexually and there's a bond beyond that. And the fact is that she's able to be herself with him and say whatever she wants. And there's that communication there that she completely lacked with Damien. So at the end of that story, you know, you're seeing that in action. You're seeing the fact that Nick although he chose to withhold that information um, from her, which I don't want to spoil everything uh, for everybody, but she, he chose to, would to, uh, you know, to not say something to her that would have changed a lot of things. Her even having been in this sort of scenario toward the end at all, um, had he told her, but because of the communication they had had over the time that they were together, he understood her so well that he knew what he also had to do for himself. And honestly, there's no other way that the story could have gone because of how great the communication was and that he loved her for her. So I don't know if that answers your question, but I I definitely see a potential prequel to that with a little bit more information about Nick and how she got into that uh, potentially happening in the future um, to give a little bit more, I guess, more of Nick's story and how that all went down. Um, but yeah, the rooted insecurity, that's a very big thing. Um, when it comes to polyamory in general, I wouldn't see that story as being a cautionary tale because it's not what actually happened in their polyamorous relationship is what uh, aside from what happened with Damien is all legit above board. And it, you know, I do mention as well that there are other relationships involved. So it's not just, you know, the, the Jade character who has different relationships and other things going on. Nick as well is enjoying polyamory. 
on his own. So there was a lot of really positive things happening there, including that great communication that they have with each other, which is so central, as you know, to any non-monogamous relationship, an ethically non-monogamous relationship. And, you know, what I do mention at the end, whatever happens, um, Oh my God, here I here I am spoiling my own story. Um, <laughs> but you know, you're stepping outside of what is permitted by polyamory. Yeah. She's very clear throughout this whole thing about the boundaries that she has with Nick and how what she's doing is violating that, but she can't seem to help herself. And that's also a character flaw, right? So because cheating can happen in ethically non-monogamous relationship. Absolutely. So I wanted to be clear with that too. I think that's a very important thing that people don't realize. It's not just free-for-alls when you're open. It doesn't work that way. Right on. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to spoil anymore, but I, want, I have a couple like... <laughs> Actually, that's a great story. And I, I think that you're right. I'd love to see a little more like prequel, you know, maybe sequel like content around that story because it is so captivating in that nature and so different. I don't read a lot of fiction that surrounds a relationship dynamic like that but Thank you. um something else we noticed when reading was that there is uh maybe a little consistency in the use of uh bdsm dom, <laughs> su dom sub angles mm -hmm. i mean is that kind of your sweet spot for erotica and is that consistent with your experience personally those stories were all the so this is the the beginning half of the book as per what my editor recommended is the lighter stuff Except for obscure, where it starts getting a little heavy, right? With right. the emotional, uh, the emotional weight of things and everything. But obscure is still toward the 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 middle of the book. The beginning of the book, trick shot, and and the stories that follow are lighter, right? There's not a, a ton of uh, kink going on. There's a little bit, a couple of elements here and there of BDSM or control and power and all of that sexiness. But really, toward the end of the book, you're getting you're getting the darker side of Lexi. You're getting that darker BDSM stuff. You're getting I haven't didn't put a lot of stories in uh, in mating season or any really where she, the Lexi character, whichever name I give her in the, <laughs> depending on the story, is dominant. Wait till mating season two. This is really my, a, a big um, mating season for me was a way to explore what I was just starting to get myself into as a submissive, which for me, as somebody who is used to being in positions of dominance or, you know, a boss bitch or whatever, for me, that was very different for to experience when I first started experiencing that in kink years back. So in mating season, I really hoped to capture that feeling that exploration that's starting to to I guess be used to or sorry starting to allow myself to enjoy being submissive to somebody else so it wasn't really so much the actual impact play it was all about the feelings of being powerless but in a way that was controlled and consensual and where I felt comfortable with whoever it was that was you know dominant in that sense so mm -hmm. I, it was also an exploration um it was for me like all of those stories related to BDSM toward the second half of the book are all true stories so I love that yeah you're getting a, a real feel of what I <laughs> experienced there so to kind of tag on to that, because I mean, I enjoy reading that. I don't know that I incorporate it as much as maybe I fantasize about in my real life. So when I read about it, I, it's always intriguing to me. And again, I love that you've been vulnerable. But the other thing I have to ask you here is in the voice, most of your characters are female, but you have a male point of view mm -hmm. in there as well. How hard is it to write from a male POV? Oh, it really wasn't. It, no? it was not. No, because I... It, I guess it depends on the character. I think that just because I understood the character so well that, that I, you're talking about Max from Trick Shot. I just, I mean, I I was able to see the entire. Um, sorry, I'm I'm forgetting the English word. I'm in French mode right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I, I, I'm. You're seeing the entire progression of the scene. I saw that from both of their perspectives. I there was. I, I actually toyed with the idea of writing the entire thing from Max's perspective because originally the whole story was only Max's perspective. And then I had to dial it back and I had the idea of doing both perspectives just because I couldn't decide. 
I, there was something missing. And then having both of their perspectives made it easier. But from the whole beginning of it, I saw that from Max's perspective, from the male perspective. So it wasn't hard at all. It just came naturally. Maybe with a different character, it might not have been that way, but it just happened that way. You know, we've established that this book is sex in print. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely hot. <laughs> but I, I want to kind of get to why we really, really wanted to get you on the show, aside from the fact that we're a fan of what you do. Thanks. But being able to put feelings into words is a talent, and it's one that's really handy in the bedroom. And we're talking about just talking shit to recounting tales from a past tryst or something like that to spice things up. Yeah, a little dirty talk. Yeah, or recreating that afternoon's tryst as a hot wife. Mm. So being able to tell a story matters. Is it hard to tell a good story during sex? <laughs> how distracted are you and how full is your mouth is my question. <laughs> <laughs> valid, valid points. Um, I get very distracted during sex and usually with all the blood pounding below my shoulders, it's kind of difficult to talk dirty in bed, but I make it happen um, when needed and also when wanted. Sometimes it's super hot to add, not during like the actual super hard, hot parts of sex, but to lead into it as foreplay, having that ability to connect with your partner and fantasize together about other scenarios, especially now, right? Because a lot of us who are, you know, in the swinging or open community, we're having a hard time finding play partners who we feel are, we're safe with. And so some of us are forced into these situations of, you know, being born again monogamous. And as a result, you know, how do you kink it up? So part of, you know, what I say also during my relationship coaching sessions is what can you do to add fantasy in there? And how can you talk dirty to your partner and come up with stories together? So um, it's not that hard. I think that people overthink a lot of things like, oh, I could never write an erotic story. I'm not a writer. Or, you know, I can't talk dirty. I wouldn't know what to say. It's really not hard. I mean, think of what it is that you want to do to your partner or what they want to do to you or what they would do with another person in the room or what would you do if you were at a sex club or what would you do if you went on a date with somebody else and then told your partner about it? It's sometimes we overthink it to the point where we're like, I could just never do that. And instead of infusing some of these very sexy scenarios into foreplay, even before their clothes come off, you know, just by sexting, with your partner, even if you're living with them, by the way, which is a fun surprise because you can actually watch their reaction as they're reading your messages. Fun, fun little thing to toy around <laughs> here with your partner. Um, but it's really not hard. You just have to think of what it is that they would find hot about the story, right? Not just about what you find hot, which is great too, but also maybe there's a specific visual that you know they're going to love. Maybe the fa something that you know, if you're recounting a date that you had, even if it was like six months ago, it doesn't really make a difference. You can make it come alive again with your partner. And maybe they have a huge fetish for lingerie. And maybe during that time that you're recounting this story to them, you're talking about what you're wearing. You're describing it in such a way. You're talking about how your partner at that time reacted to your outfit, what they did, how they took it off your body, or if they kept it on. Maybe they came all over it or something. You know, little things like that, those details are so visual. They were, they're so sexy. Like I'm salivating just thinking about it. <laughs> so, you know, writing is all about the details or the devils in the details as you, as, as the saying goes, right? Just yeah. if you capture some of those moments and you have like flashes in your head, like little photos, you know, think about those. What made that experience so juicy and exciting for you? And what is it that your partner might get out of it by hearing you telling it again? You know, if you don't have those stories, that's okay. Not everybody is a hot wife. Not everybody has these other experiences, you know, having orgies and clubs or, you know, having dates or all these threesomes or, or all of that. Some people are newer to this lifestyle. Sometimes just the fantasy alone is hot enough to get off of. Yeah, that's fair enough. I think when I, I personally, when I first started talking dirty in the bedroom, I, I struggled with the scripters and trying to figure out where I was comfortable saying things and, you know, if I found this hot and I say it out loud, is that shameful? Like, I, I had a lot of struggles there. And sometimes I would say something 
And I'm not going to lie, it sounded so ridiculous <laughs> that all I could do <laughs> is burst out into laughter. And if we were like talking just us girls, like quick one on one, let's say we're talking to a monogamous friend. Like, what are some like small little tips to give them as a starting point? Like, say it's just her and her partner. Like, how would you even begin to like give them advice? Like, do you start with what makes you feel sexy as a woman? Or do you start with what she thinks her partner would find sexy? Like, what would you what would you advise? So there are people who are, you know, I, I, monogamous or let's call it, let's say vanilla yeah. or whatever, who are terrible talking in bed in general, communicating what they want, you know, oh, a little harder, a little faster and whatever. If you're going from uh -huh. no communication at all to dirty talk, you're going to have a really hard time. But if you're going from a place of, you know, you're already okay and like kind of giving your partner an idea of what feels good on your body and all of that. And then you're able to take it up a notch by starting to talk dirty. You'll have a lot of, you'll have a much easier time. What you're talking about, Mallory, also has a lot to do with our confidence. So if you don't feel confident in, you know, um, in being able to not just like tell a story, but just in yourself, feeling sexy. If you're in a sexy mm -hmm. state of mind as it is, it will be a lot easier. It will just, it will flow a lot more naturally, I find. If you're feeling kind of insecure, and by the way, laughing is fine during sex. A lot of things, we, we, <laughs> we think sex always has to be serious. Most of the time during sex, I'm laughing or, you know, uh, not during the whole thing, obviously, you know, I'm being appropriate <laughs> about where the laughter is, but things happen during sex. And that's part, that's one of the natural things that happen. So even if you're talking dirty and something seems funny to you or it just sounds like crazy coming out of your mouth or your partner says something and maybe it's not the desired uh, intention and you you kind of giggle a bit, that's okay, right? That's that's fine. Yes, that's totally ab absolutely. okay. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm just going to say now, though, that, Lexi, if I take off my pants and you bust out laughing, you better be screaming. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I mean. Like that it's appropriate laughter, hands. right? Appropriate laughter. <laughs> and but I mean, as far as tips go, because that's a great question. Um, firstly, loosening up a little bit and also maybe just like kind of uh, before you get into the scenario where you are going to dirty talk, think about it a little bit first. If you're if you're like me, you're going to maybe want to write down notes. I'm not saying take crib notes with you to, to bed or anything uh, or write it on your arm. You don't need to do that. But just to get it out in a way that makes sense to you. Like I, I work very well that way where I just jot down like a couple of words or adjectives or things that I know that I'm going to want to include. And by writing it down on paper, I actually kind of it, it I don't know it I internalize it, it more I don't know yeah maybe it, for me I think it would ingrain it to memory yeah. and I just had this hilarious visual of me grabbing note cards out of my bra <laughs> from the floor <laughs> hold on one second I have a note for this <laughs> And I mean, there are other things you could do that. Or if you if you have a really hard time talking dirty, like coming from yourself, use somebody else's words. Find a dirty poem, uh, an erotic poem, or Ooh. read an excerpt for, from someone's erotic story. If you're having trouble with your own words at first, use someone else's. And then once you feel comfortable with that, it'll be a lot easier for you to say your own thing. You can also throw it back to your partner. Maybe you read an excerpt, you're like, ooh, that, I found that really hot. I thought this, like, I really enjoyed X, Y, and Z in this story. How about you? What did you think when, you know, she uh, uh, she undressed uh, this other woman in front of him for the first time and then she started, you know, licking her pussy, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have these visuals and then you could put the book aside and you could start fantasizing together. So it can just kind of evolve naturally. I think the whole idea is just don't put so much pressure on yourself. It's, a, it's supposed to be fun. Sex is supposed to be fun. Dirty talk is supposed to be fun and sexy. So just chill, enjoy and make it and, and have it be like a, like a natural progression of things rather than it's an event all, you know, in and of itself. I'm just going to start my own little book of short poems. You know, my Andrew Dice Clay, you know, hickory dickory doc. You'll love the taste of my cock. I'll just put it out on little cards and, and hand it to ladies and see how it goes. But it, it, it's funny for a, a lot of reasons. But when we talk about, you know, talking shit in bed, and I, I think you hit on a really important note, 
which is communication between you and your partner to get to know what their hot buttons are before you start talking. Otherwise, you sound like yeah. a bad porn flick. Ooh, stick that hard <laughs> dick in my ass, you nasty motherfucker, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And it's like, this is where porn yeah. screws us over. And porn continues to screw us over. It doesn't matter what your lifestyle is or what your preferences are. Nothing they're doing, it really reflects more often than not how it yeah. really goes when you're delving into eroticism because eroticism is more than body. It's mind as well. And so for, for me, I think that it would be really interesting to see how some of these things go in, you know, in real life, right? I mean, Mallory is an expert at talking shit. She's amazing at it. But Aw, thanks. Like, it took me a long time <laughs> to get there. It, but, it, you know, it started out very porn-like. Do you like that? Do you, you, know, you, know, you like my pussy, blah. And then it really kind of turned into something that was a lot more really digging in my head to see that's what true. I was visual. Well, that's also a matter of knowing you, right? It's over time. You, you get to f know how your partner might react to certain things. Maybe you know that some of the things that you've said that were, you know, uh, will make them laugh. And that's maybe a no for the next time. Like just knowing, okay, these, this sequence of words is not going to turn them on. It's going to make them laugh instead. And then evolving from there. Um, <laughs> I just... Right. Well, at this point, after two years of doing this show, half of America knows how to turn me on. So <laughs> it's really kind of terrifying. I haven't I haven't given away all your secrets. just yet. Thank you. Well, I, I did want to know, though. So when you are talking, because, you know, I might come across a lady who really wants me to tell her something to and, and usually it's make me laugh. Tell me a story that's funny. And I'm like, great, I can do that a drop of the time. But if they really want something sexy, do you space it out? Do you put it all in the front? I mean, how do you draw it out effectively to get the maximum impact? Oh, letting it out in pieces for sure. You want to draw it out. It's all about anticipation. Anticipation is one of the sexiest things that, you know, erotic is good for, right? It builds that anticipation. Dirty talk is good for that. Sexting is good for that. All, you know, when you're engaging your partner's mind, as you hinted at earlier, you know, it, you are immediately going to connect with their body. If you turn on their brain, their body will follow naturally. But you can't just go and sit down and tell a whole story, especially if you don't have one on demand, right? I mean, how many of us have a whole sex story on demand that you know is going to get your partner hot? If you don't know your partner that well, too, that's going to be super challenging, right? It's going to be a lot easier for me to, for example, uh, just, you know, sit down and, and have a, or sit down, lie down, whatever, whatever position we're in, and tell a dirty story to my partner of 15 years, versus a new lover whose tastes I don't know. But if let's say you you meet someone and you're in a you know the kind of situation where you could theoretically have some dirty talk and you don't know them that well, you could you could ask them some questions first before you start getting into the story. Like, you know, chances are, it, unless they're a complete, complete stranger, like you met them that night and chances are you're not going to waste all that much time, you know, talking dirty specifically and telling them a whole story. Maybe you're just going to kind of get into the action. I don't know. Um, but you'll have a feel for who this person is and how to relate the story to them in a way that's sexy. So like using locations that you both know or that you know they know, keeping it like super super basic, right? You don't have to go into crazy detail and, you know, talk about what uh, the setting looks like and the color of the drapes and, you know, the bedspread had memory foam and who gives a fuck? The whole, what's important about erotica is you want to engage all the senses, okay? So you walked into a, a room and it smelled like X, right? The smell of something, which we often don't talk about very much, is so important. It's very visceral, right? If you smell something, that can some some sense can evoke such a physical and sexual response from us. So, you know, thinking about what do they see? What are they tasting if they kiss each other? It, you know, maybe someone's tongue is minty from gum that they were chewing or something like that. Uh, you know, maybe um, the like the 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 music that was playing evokes a particular sensation. You also want to use the opportunity of dirty talk to talk about how people feel in their body. So what I know for me personally is hot when someone else is talking dirty to me is that they're talking about also how whatever I'm doing or what they're seeing when they're looking at me or whatever other 
other people are in the room is what they're feeling in their body. What makes them hard? What gets them wet? I want, that is for me the sexiest thing when I'm hearing someone talk dirty to me. Oh, it made me so, you know, uh, it made me so wet when, you know, she walked in and she just, you know, gave me this look and then, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Just feeling that from the person, imagining what that person is experiencing in their mind as they're recounting the story to me really gets me hot. Like that to me is a huge, huge part of it is understanding how that person is feeling and it's what they were, the sensations are happening in their body. To me, that is so, it's a great way to get to know your partner too. Then I can, yeah. Oh, so absolutely. I don't know. I don't know if that helps at all, but a little bit. No, totally. Because I feel like the more you get into somebody's head, the, the better you're going to be at expressing yourself in that manner. And I remember using this one. Oh, God, what was it? Oh, I was going down on somebody and I looked up at her. and I was like, you taste like sunshine. And she nice. loved it. And I was like, I don't know what sunshine tastes like, but that's what I imagine <laughs> it. So we're just going to roll with that. Uh, and I, it worked I, I out ate really it too and it did taste just like sunshine. <laughs> and I just want you to and know. So I learned like it doesn't have to be like something immediately relatable like relatable like sometimes people can smell like the beach yes. or the sun or and it's you know what I mean so I try to incorporate stuff like that because I'm not excellent at adjectives all the time so yeah. that's helpful for me um what I did find though is when I was playing with girls or or two girls are playing and you're shit talking I got inside my head and I'm like does this change based on the gender? Like, is there gender neutral dirty talk? And like, I, I started going down this like whole diatribe in my head about, you know, what's the right way and do I pose it differently? Do you feel like there's gender, gender neutral dirty talk? Is that a thing? Sure. Well, look, I mean, it depends on who you're talking to, right? If the person I'm with is, let's say, non-binary, mm -hmm. and I know that they maybe they they have a, a vagina, but they don't like be, it being called a pussy. But I'll know this in advance okay. because, you know, we got to this point. So I'll make sure not to use any language that makes them feel uncomfortable. Mm. And, you know, whatever, whatever that means, right? Not everybody likes having their, you know, their cunt. I, I don't, I, I have no problem with that word, being referred to as a pussy. Right. Mm. I love that word. I use it ad nauseum in my book. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> pussy, cock, fuck, suck, all the all the words, all the all those very uh, sexy words. But um, yeah, you you really have to adapt your language to who you're talking to. Right. Um, I think it helps. Like I said, not not being strangers. It's harder to talk to a stranger in that way. Like if I just picked you up at the club and we're we're going to we're going to fuck in the sex club, I'm not going to have time or care about dirty talking. There's really not going to be a lot of that going on, creating like a story and a whole thing. Chances are it's going to be an in the moment sexy talk, right? Which is, oh, you feel so good inside me or fuck me harder or that kind of mm -hmm. thing. But and coming up with like a whole story as like foreplay, that's probably less likely to happen because I don't know anything about you and I don't know exactly what you're going to find sexy from the story. So I can try, but it, I feel like it would be more effective with someone you at least know a little bit more about. So if I know that someone doesn't like, uh, you know, um, isn't into BDSM or doesn't like having their dicks referred to as cocks and they have a different word that they would prefer to use, then I might know that earlier on and be able to incorporate that kind of language in the story that I'm telling. And, you know, adjectives and stuff like that too, you know, um, you can be very vague with the language. You can just say, you know, use, you can just use terms that are pretty, I guess, I want to say normal or common, you don't have to go crazy digging into a thesaurus or anything like that either. You know, you could just say between your legs if you want to be super vague about language for genitalia. You know, you could be, you could just say, uh, like words like hard or wet or anything like that. It's still sexy because it's also the way you're saying it and the look in your eyes when you're, when you're telling your partner too is definitely something that's important. So, always customize whatever you're saying, whatever kind of dirty talk to who you're talking to. You need, I think it's important to kind of get a feel for who you're talking to. Well, I can tell you both, and I'm just going to speak for men everywhere and tell you that you can call my cock Perry the Purple Platypus <laughs> if you want to, as long as you're going to play with it. 
<laughs> it's just fun. I, that's too many Yeah, I, I, Perry the Purple Platypus. It's a mouthful in and of itself right there. <laughs> so is my cousin. Yeah, I was going to say, yes, it is. <laughs> so we're in nice. agreement. Nice. <laughs> so... As it says, the purple, or you know, also was was a question. Uh, depends uh, on the cock uh-huh, ring. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> nice. Very nice. <laughs> but, You're crazy. <laughs> I have issues. I have I have a distinct set of fucking issues, but everybody knows that already. So you know, speaking of issues and words and all these things we've talked about here, we're gonna kind of put a bow on this thing because I want you to do something for me. You love adjectives. <laughs> Having read your book, you have more words for common vernacular than than just about anybody I've ever seen. And they're all dirty as shit. What is your favorite dirty word that isn't dirty? Something that just screams sex. Oh, man. Ah, oh, fuck. Like, just a regular word that I find sexy? Oh, motherfucker. Yeah. That's there's one. That's, that's one. A, that could, that could okay. I mean, it depends on the context. That could be hot, too. Samuel L. Jackson beat you to that one. So going to pick another one. Yeah. Well, it it somehow sounds very sexy when he says it just because of how aggressive he is when he does. So, yeah, there's something right? hot about that. I don't know if it's about the word is um, so much how it's used. I find anything with X's in it, exquisite, exotic, quixotic. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, oh. I, it's very, very hard to answer that question. Shit. Well, you answer it a lot in your book, you know, and, and I mean, right down to what was it? Uh, I think in Quick Shot, you actually referred to her her pussy walls as her searing Ooh. flesh. And I was like, ooh, searing's interesting. That could either be a burn victim or. Super hot. <laughs> so, I, I think I've used scorching and other words like that too, um, talking about hot and, you know, the amount of synonyms, by the way, yeah. for hot and wet, you know. I use every word in like possible for wet, except for moist. Oh God, saying it right now just uh, makes me want to cringe. God, don't use no. that fucking oh, word ever. I, I use both of you guys. Uh, I love that word. She's my spirit animal. Uh, she is my spirit animal. <laughs> you will not see that word anywhere in the book. Not yeah. once in mating season. No. I hate that right. word. It's not sexy. Well, how do you guys feel about uh, supple? Supple's hot. That's a hot have- word. I have, a, I have a supple ass. Okay. All right. Because a lot of people who don't like moist don't like the word supple. No, so supple. that's fine. Moist okay. is, moist it's the is bad. syllables in <laughs> yeah. there. Like I would, there's no. drenched, you know, there's like that to, to me, like, you know, any, there any other word, any word, even just using yeah. wet over and over is better than using moist to have yeah. to switch it up. Yeah. You say, you say moist and I get a Ugh. picture in my head of Madeline Albright in a wet bikini and I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> Really? Okay. It's to each their own. Good. I know that's that's a very polarizing juicy? word. Oh, it's grotesque. Juicy, yeah. you know. Juicy's mm. great. Yes. Yeah. Juicy sounds like yeah. I'm licking my lips. You know, that's hot. That's a hot word. You know, to use. Eating a peach, like, and it drips mm, down. Mm, that's yes. hot. Yep. All right. Well, now y'all are turning me on. So, <laughs> Lexi, real quick, why don't you let everybody know where they can find you? Where can they buy your book? Well, where can't they find me is, I think, the better question. You <laughs> dirty little stalkers, you. You can find me at LexiSilver.com. That's Lexi with an I, Silver with a Y. And it is Lexi Silver on all the things, including Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, OnlyFans, which is a new one I just added, and Pinterest, um, and probably some other places that I completely forgot about. But you can find me in all those places. Best bet is go to my website and uh, – and find me. You could find my book there, Fading Season. You could find my coaching services there. And uh, you'll also find my podcast episodes. And there will be one soon with Mickey and Mallory of Casual Swinger because we are going to have to talk after this. I had too much fun on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, we loved having you. Yes, it was so much fun. Now we can say we've had Lexi. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> We are going to have to get out of here, but I want to thank you for joining us today. This was this was a lot of fun. And before we go, uh, we wanted to make sure you knew how much we appreciated it. We appreciate what you do. We enjoyed your book, and we hope everybody enjoyed some of these tips on, you know, talking shit and talking dirty. <laughs> and if you want some of these college words in her book, her name is Lexi Silver, and it's called Mating Season, Volume 1, First Edition. You can get it on Amazon, or you can get it on her website. And if you do buy it from her website, she will 
write in it for you. I've got a little sexy note in mind that I'm not going to show anybody. <laughs> yeah, I did. I, uh, I did Aww, personalize yeah. yours with an autograph, which I I don't do for everybody, but you know, you got a special one there. Yeah, you did. Oh, Aww. that's so sweet. I got a <laughs> lipstick kiss too. That was. Hmm. Aww. <laughs> Yes, says daddy. He's a happy boy. <laughs> you should see his face. All right, Mallory, you want to tell everybody where they can find us? Absolutely. Uh, thanks for joining us today. You're, we are Casual Swinger everywhere. That's CasualSwinger.com. Feel free to shoot us a message at podcast at Casual Swinger. You can find us on the dating sites as well. SDC, SLS, Double Date Nation, Quiver, and Cassidy. And if you guys love us, love what we do, feel free to shoot us a review on iTunes. Yeah, we need more of those. Somebody gave us a crappy review, and we're down to like 4.3 now. Yeah, it's that one fucking guy. Look, I need validation, all right? I do, too. I love affirmation. (laughs) All right, folks, this has been Talk Dirty to Me with Lexi Silver. Make sure to catch us next time. we got another special episode coming for you. You've been listening to Casual Swinger. Casual Swinger.